OK, it's been another big week for national security and defence. And while the PM wasn't there, Richard Miles has been representing Australia at the NATO conference. Let's bring in our security expert, Lincoln Parker. Lincoln, welcome. Uh, a G'day. lot of talk, obviously, given it was NATO, about Russia and Ukraine, but China with a fair few mentions as well. Yeah, that's right. So I think Europe is waking up and certainly the United States is going to wake up to the threat of China. And <clears throat> we're seeing their aggression on a daily basis against the Philippines. And we've talked about this in over the last few months. And they're attacking even Australian planes and helicopters and, and our pilots and, and way back when they attacked our divers. So I think the world is finally waking up to their aggression and their militarism. Uh, have a listen, the NATO Secretary General on that point. China has become a decisive enabler of Russia's war against Ukraine. Support increases the threat Russia poses to Euro Atlantic security. So this is a good thing for Australia, right, particularly given our position globally and, and how close we are to China compared with, say, America and, and Europe. Does this improve our safety, more awareness about the threat of China? No. So, well, because, look, NATO are going to focus on Europe. They're the North Atlantic Treaty Organisation. They have already actually said that they're not going to get involved in a clash between China when it invades mm. Taiwan. Um, so, look... Even back in World War II, the United Kingdom, Great Britain could not help us when we were attacked by the Imperial Japanese. So I do not think that we should be, you know, having any sense of false comfort here. Um, and look, this is just underscored by our Prime Minister not even attending mm. the NATO summit in Washington, D.C. He doesn't seem to care either. It's funny. I know that people are saying, oh, well, you paid him out when he was Airbus Albo going everywhere and now you're saying, oh, he's not going enough places. I think it's pretty reasonable to expect our leader to be able to identify, given the current strategic climate we're in, what matters now and what <laughs> might not matter as much. Yeah, well, yeah, especially when it comes to uh, your national security, your economic security, your energy security, things that actually affect Australia, Australians, our economy, um, how we you know, import all of the critical components that we need for our economy. These are the sorts of things yeah. that Airbus Albo or Prime Minister Albanese ought to be focused on, not going away for, uh, you know, sort of trips to Paris. Uh, talk to me about uh, freedom of information. We've found out about another incident. Uh, we know about a couple of, of near misses and, and, you know, we've had people hurt with Chinese vessels and Australian ships and helicopters as well. What, what have we found out now? So we've just seen a Freedom of Information um, Act being returned to uh, the media, which has clearly stated that when the uh, Australian Navy was in the international waters on a UN mission, mm -hmm. um, that there was a Chinese destroyer closely shadowing it, um, and then a Chinese jet essentially came and attacked one of the deployed Australian helicopters by using chaff or, like, flares that come out the back that had it got into the helicopter, could have brought the helicopter down yeah. and killed Australian pilots and Australian Navy sailors. Um, so we weren't aware of that before. We weren't aware of the shadowing and we weren't aware of just where the attack happened, that it, that it happened in clear international waters as Australia was doing UN work. But still, we welcome the Premier with open arms, of course. And, and none of that was mentioned. we do. Of course not. No. no. You wouldn't want to make it awkward. Don't be silly. <laughs> uh, just quickly, Ukraine, another big pledge from Australia. I think the biggest since the invasion, which is good news, nowhere near enough yet, but I know you and I are both very passionate about this issue. We've hosted events with the Ukrainian ambassador. We Still, have. Uh, what do you think of this latest amount? Well, look, I think I'm probably going to differ here with you a little bit because I think that Australia should be focused on providing more money, support and resources to the Australian Defence Force, not to Ukraine. That's $255-odd million that's gone to Ukraine that could go to the ADF when we have seen that China has blatantly stated war is coming. They've said it. They've said it out of their mouth. They've written it. War is coming and we're not prepared. So I want to see that money going to the Australian Defence Force. See, my kind of take on that would be, I reckon essentially we're already completely screwed when it comes to the threat of China. Are we better off doing something that keeps us at least in somewhat in good stead with the likes of America who want us to give more to Ukraine because we're going to need their bloody help? Well, that's true, except we're going to hopefully see a change in administration mm. and the Trump administration, <laughs> <Might matter> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to get out of Europe and they're going to focus on the Asia-Pacific. Yep, absolutely. Lincoln, brilliant. Love chatting with you. Thank you so Thanks, much for Aaron. your time, as always.